The love uh, uh, helped me take that freaking gun out of my mouth. You had those moments? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just like everybody. I've done funeral details where I folded that flag very slowly. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the flag means something totally different than somebody who's just here, who's played professional football, who, who's on the Rick side. I can't be mad at him because he doesn't know these experiences because he's never been there. Yeah. He doesn't know. So it means something different. You're finding your mission you get to the military because that, that thing you've been working on, that important mission, that strategic mission, that national mission, that patriotic thing that you've been doing for however long you've been doing it for, it's not there anymore. You have to do is you have to find a new mission. If you don't find a new mission, then you're wandering around aimlessly, and that's going to keep you getting in trouble. I don't believe in failure. I look at failure as an opportunity to, uh, to move on. I'd give him two, two great pieces of advice, and that is one, stay connected to your network. Stay connected to the veteran network, it's immense, and allow yourself to expand outside of that. And the second thing is understand your value, understand right. your worth, because only our veteran community understands what they've done. And you have to know what your value is. You have to know how to be able to translate that into the private sector. You need to know how to translate that as an entrepreneur or as an artist or whatever it is you choose to do. You have to know what your value is. And I think a lot of people struggle with that because we led a life of service, mm -hmm. a commitment to serving our nation, to serving others, to helping those that couldn't help themselves, right? Right. So we're geared to think this way. Yeah. And when we transition from the military, our natural instinct is to give it away. So that's something hard that a lot of people don't see when they transition out of the military is your service and your commitment has value. So I would ask you, what is your hourly rate? What are you worth? Yeah. And obviously a guy that did four years in the Marine Corps or in the Navy or in the Army, you have to measure that yeah. compared to a guy that did 24 years in the Marine Corps or the Navy. So you need to weigh that out, but understand that as you move forward, there's so many great opportunities out there for you. And if you are open to expand other networks, it just gets better and better. And this is a, this is a prime example of being here with you today, so thanks. Awesome. So what was your first step? What was that transition into creating your own consulting company? I have this thing called, you know, this belief that's called relational capital. That means I, I invest in relationships, which creates, which is like investing in, you know, sort of money. How do you do that? Um, I give. So just, just like I came here, yesterday I missed the entire event because I went to every single vendor's table and said, how can I help you? The nonprofits. Mm -hmm. I, I showed them all exactly how to make immediate impact in their business, how to, yeah. how to make money immediately. There was government contractors there. How do you get your know, products into Costco and into in Walmart? Who are the people you need to talk to? And I just went to every table. So I said to myself, okay, I didn't see you know, the Hoffmeister, you know, David Hasselhoff, I didn't see anybody. I saw Jocko, you know, but I didn't see anybody else. And, but it was so worth it because I was helping veterans yeah. up their game. Yeah. And, so, and so that's what I do. I find it, I find immediate revenue in your company because there's things that you're not doing because you don't know about it. Right. Because most entrepreneurs are really good at what they do, but only at what they do, and they don't know what they don't know. So what do you think is more important at this stage, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, intellectual or your gut? Intellectual. Intellectual. Yeah. And, and here's why. Because I've met way too many people that, that like just knew something would be good, but they couldn't articulate with their words why it would be good. They couldn't explain exactly what customer would have to buy that product. Okay. They couldn't tell me how much they thought the product would cost to make, how much they would have to sell it, how big the market would. They couldn't do the basics. Yeah. They just had this feeling. Right. So that's not enough. Gotcha. You need a, a baseline understanding of, of the, the market yep. of, and, and, and why. Like th that's one thing. Numbers are important. How big is the demographic? How much of the demographic can you capture? How much is it cost to make? How much is each item going to sell for? That you, you think, and this is all hypothetical in the beginning, yeah. right? So you need that. But the other thing is, why are they going to buy your product? And if you can't, you got to flush that through. Yeah, if you cannot explain why they're going to buy your cup of coffee instead of this cup of coffee and this one and this one and this one, if you can't give a really solid reason why, then it's not good enough. Yeah. Then you need to develop, you need to improve the product to improve the why, or choose a new product. So that would be your advice to somebody in transition and they're thinking about entrepreneurship as an alternative to a typical job, is to actually do the numbers, do the analysis, make sure that it works, and will they make money? Yes, you have to approach it practically. 
and logically. Okay. It's not enough to have an idea and it's not enough to know this is gonna be great, right? That's a great starting point. Right. But there are plenty of people who, who, who didn't start with that. They just started with like seeing, oh, huh. A lot of people seem interested in that. Let's give it a shot. How can, I, how can I monetize that? And then that's what you run through. Uh, right? You see, you see the demand first. Yeah. And you're like, how can I fill that demand? Okay. Uh, how can I make that financially viable? Okay. Wow. And then that, putting all of that together, develops the feeling in the gut. Once you've done that, then it's the appropriate time to go with the gut. Mm -hmm. Because what, what exactly does the gut mean? It's, it's, it's just this feeling. Mm -hmm. But where does the feeling come from? You have to articulate. And ideally, the feeling should come from. And this is, I, I, I love giving this advice about dating and women too. It's the same, the same thing. It's like, I just love her, I just love her. Why? Why? Outside of the obvious. Yes. That, em that emotion is yeah. not enough. Yeah. She needs to make you laugh. She needs to intellectually stimulate you, make you better, yeah. get along great with your friend, you know, all these things. Yeah. You have to articulate them and be specific about all these things. And then it's like, yeah, that's the one. That's the girl. That's the product I got to sell. Yeah. The gut should, needs to be, be built uh, from a foundation of logic. Right. Stop acting like you gotta do it alone, right? We all understand teamwork when we're in, yeah. but then we get out and we think, screw everybody else, I'm gonna figure this out on my Spot own. Spot on. Right? And th that's why I have so a frustrating. business partner now, right? <laughs> yeah. I tried it and I, I sucked at it. And I think as entrepreneurs, it's a lonely world, yeah. right? It really is. You can literally stay behind a computer all yeah. day, never interact with another human being, yeah. make good money, yeah. but you, you can't do it alone. It's yeah. entrepreneurship, business is a team sport, it's not golf. You know what I mean? Like it's not something that you are playing by yourself. And I think the more times that you try to do it alone without a business partner or at least business connections and network, going to conferences, mm -hmm. making friendships, not just, you know, shoving business cards yep. in people's faces. Yep. When you build real relationships, that's that's the biggest piece of advice I could give. Invest in yourself. One of the easiest ways to invest in yourself. One of my buddies is a copywriter, writes copy like I do. And he wrote an article about the secret government government facility that nobody knows about. Not here at 51? No. <laughs> the library. Yeah. <Ooh. laughs> so, so every time I go to the library, I call it the secret government facility. <laughs> All the knowledge in the world is in there. You know what I'm saying? So and nobody's reading, checking it out. <laughs> and nobody's checking out books, right? So reading, you know, read books have so much yeah. you know knowledge and wisdom they're all in books yeah. everything that we need to know in business is in a book yeah. you know now whether it, it, it's cool because you might be you know audio book yeah. you know you can read a book heck some books they have the video breakdown of the book some there are programs right now mentor box one of my favorite programs right it's like they have like they have like a seven dollar a month yeah. option they would basically have the author pull out all the main points of the book and give you exercises to do so you retain the book at 10 minutes a day. Epic. So reading is super important, like super, super important, and most people don't. And what I mean by that is doesn't necessarily mean, hey, I don't read a physical book, but audio, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Some people, what high-level cats do, mm -hmm. is like, this is a hack. They'll listen to the audio and read the book at the same time. That's a big hack. That's a major key right there. Take that home. The man who put it all together, Mr. Chris Soriano, man. Thanks, Thank brother. Thank you, brother, for having me on your show. Dude, honored to have me at your con your conference, man. Clever Thank Talks you. 2018. Yes. We're here to share, you know, veterans like yourself that made it. And please tell me, brother, you're part Filipino. I'm doing 100% <laughs> Filipinos right here. 100% organic spam, baby. <laughs> Thank you. So, so what motivated you to get, get this started? Because Chris was telling me that you guys started in a 600 square foot top, top cubicle at the shared office space. Yeah. And, well, the, and to see a girl and, wow, <laughs> check you out. The thing was, it was never really for, for veterans. It was just for other millennials like myself. And uh, from there, all these young veterans came in, like 25, 28, and they were like, yo, I'm so lost. Uh, you know, I'm, I came here because I want to connect with other people like me. Yeah. And I'm like, in San Diego, go figure, right? Yeah. All these veterans, Marine, Navy. Military city, yeah. Yeah, and from there, they just said, you know, I want to create a business. I want to do this. And, 
you know, us as a small not, we weren't a nonprofit. We were just a bunch of millennials saying, let's be a nonprofit, let's help our veterans, and let's go all in. And from there, we just blew up in five years. That's, that's amazing, man. Thank so you. what was it like to pitch Mark Cuban? Oh, man, I, people don't know. I, people always ask me, how'd you get Mark Cuban's contact? I was like, I Googled it, you know? I, I Googled Mark Cuban. I mean, you could do this right now, listening. Google Mark Cuban email, and on the seventh page, there's an article, Silicon Valley Times, and it said, if you have an idea, pitch him yourself. And I shot it off, and in the subject line, I put Mark Cuban to inspire thousands of veterans. And, I, and in the subject, it was very brief, it was one paragraph. I said, Mr. Cuban, will you empower our veterans because they want to make a business? 30 minutes later, I get a response asking me questions. I was like, oh, this is probably not Mark Cuban, you know, this is probably some spam bot. And sure enough, the next morning I get calls from Dallas and I'm like, I think he owns the Dallas Mavericks. So, yes, you know, yes. and I answer all questions, jump through all these gatekeepers. And at the end of the day, he, he said three words, no contract till this day. He just said, I'll be there. Wow. And I said, and he showed up the day I was crossing my fingers and I was like, I hope he shows up. And then I had my Air Force veteran at the airport saying, Mark Cuban's uh, jet has landed and he's going to be here. And I was like, thank God. So he just flew his private jet. He's, he has the Guinness World Record for the largest online purchase, which is that jet. He still has it too. So you're not flying spirit? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like me, I'm flying spirit while he's, a, you know, but he gave back to our veterans that wow. day. And that was a year ago from today. Goodness. So that's no physical phone communication Nothing, until he email. physically met you in his private jet shaking your hand. Well, he came from his jet to our venue. And then that's when we shook hands. I said, thank you for being here. He said, wow. absolutely. Tell me what you want me to do to speak to our veterans. And it just happened from there. Wow. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> so people make right. it this big whole mountain that you got to slay and, and conquer. Yeah. It, it's, it was an email. It was an email. Yeah. Good Not one you. phone call. Yeah. And um, I didn't ask him for any money. Yeah. We just, because most people would probably hit him up and yeah. say, could you donate? Yeah. And after that conference, he donated, not, not that specific conference, he donated us $100,000 to our movement. And we gave all of it away to our conference. We, we've never had a salary in five years. We've been doing this all volunteer. We, were, we gave it all away so much, we were negative 15,000. And we were like, so anyways, you know, the point was he's really supported us the whole time in, in our conference and our movement. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Mark Cuban there, man. For all his help. A true shark. Yeah. Uh, what do you hope? the veterans or the attendees that come here, what do you hope they take away? I hope that they get to connect with people like you, you know, people that are successful veterans making moves and making a, a difference and helping other veterans because a lot of our, you know, when you say you're, you're a veteran, you don't think millionaire right away. You don't think, oh, this guy's got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the people that I met today, a lot of them are, are just starting. And so mm -hmm. when they connect with you, they go, oh, there's hope. You know, that guy did it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. My goal here is just to make sure people can connect. And I hope that they take that knowledge and they apply it. Because that's, that's what it's all about, applying the knowledge that you learn. 100%. I'm even more excited about this because not only do I get to support the military veteran community, but to support a fellow Filipino. Oh, hell yeah. We're gonna have it, it's even like, it's like that, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, so that being said, Chris Sariano right here, Clever Talks, organizer, founder, mover and shaker. Hey, it was once a game, now it's a job. What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Clever Talks 2018 conference right here with some gentlemen of ADTS, standing for? All Drone Technology Solutions. Oh man, very good. So I'm here with Roger Apolinar. Rogelio. Filipino. And my man here, Air Force veteran, Eric Carpenter. Guys, uh, great to be with you guys. Thank you, thank you for having Thank us. you for being part of the Clever Talks. Yeah. So, um, listen man, obviously San Diego, Filipino, Air Force veteran. Listen, we got the best of both worlds. Filipino, Air Force veteran, perfect for our channel. Yeah. Really what, what aircraft did you, uh, did you work on? Uh, F-15s, 16s, B-1 bombers, uh, later on C-17s. Gotcha. So how did you guys put this company together? You're in the Air Force, you're playing well, with so toys. Interesting, <laughs> yeah, interesting story. So the, the way it kind of started was I was, uh, uh, I was I was getting ready to fly a job down in San Jose. I'm, I'm from the North Bay, so I don't really have that. I don't know too many people down There's there. Filipinos in Bay Area? The second highest concentration in the world. <laughs> they call it Little? Daily City, Daily Daily City. City California. <laughs> It's Shout very, out to it's very foggy there. It's very foggy. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was flying. I was I was practicing flying that evening before the shoot. I, I clipped the fence and I broke one of my props. And I was like, I don't have any spare props. How am I gonna How am I gonna do this job? Yeah. I put a call out on the internet uh, to the people who like, basically people who own the same bird. Um, like, hey, I'm in San Jose. I don't know anybody here. Does someone have a spare prop? 
And this guy hits me up that night, and he's like, yo, meet me here in the morning. We, we, I, I rolled out there. He set me up with extra props. We started flying. We've been flying together ever since. So. Crazy. Yeah, really But cool. are you in San Diego? Where, where are you from? San Jose. San, oh, so San Jose. Yeah, we're based Yay in the area. Yeah, exactly. Yay area, Boom. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. That, but yeah. we're looking to bring our operation down here in San Jose. We're planting roots out here, so this is this is why we're here. From San Jose to San Diego, yeah. nice. Yeah. I, I want to ask you, you know, coming from the military, coming coming from the Air Force, um, and I understand you're a disabled veteran. Yes, sir. Yep. So, what key areas coming from your military experience do you take into business into the business world today? Um, Some key attributes. Work ethics. Isn't uh, it work ethic? Yeah. Really. Like I, I mean, I. Drove all the way here, got yeah. it, 2 a.m., went to sleep, but uh, yeah. was here by 5.30. Just get it, it done. I mean, just yeah, get it done. done. Just, well, that yeah, work ethic, reached, how did you reach out to him he, initially? He, no, for sure. Yeah, he's, for sure. Always, he's had the military like work, work ethic ever since I met him. He's yeah, 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 just, yeah, 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 working hard, man. Yeah, working hard. And that's rare in the civilian world. No yeah, offense. it is. <laughs> no, it is. I see it. I see it. Yeah. And that's why I think we, we got along so well and we worked well together. And it was like when we started, I started getting jobs, he started getting jobs. He's like, we just started calling each other like, yo, man, we got to keep working because this is a good mix. This is a good, this is a good uh, flow that we got going on. So. so so how do you guys work that in terms of partnership? What are you good at and what are you good at? He's good at editing. Okay. Uh, I can hack it up and yeah. give the, the short bits, you know, get rid of the crap. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Eric, Eric is, uh, he's, he's really good. Like he's our, he's our chief field operator, right? He's our chief pilot. He's, a, he's the guy. When we go in the field, Eric's the man. Okay. When we go into post production, like I typically try not to do that work anymore, but like I'll, I'll, I'll craft it and mold it and put it out in the world. Um, but we're, you know, we're always looking to, to expand the team so I can kind of hand that stuff off because we're trying to scale the business. Right? There you go. And so keyword there, man. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to get more people to, to work on that. But those are the kinds of things that we can train yeah. people to. Aside from training drones, if you're interested in learning post-production, we can start a class for that too. No kidding. Easily. So you guys are evolving. Yeah. yeah. So we can take one for a spin? Yeah, let's do that. Do yeah, right? you ready? Let's, let's do it. Do I need, do I know it? I don't need a license. No, you don't. Uh, no, no, no. Fly, no. Fly, oh, fly plan? Both of us are licensed. So I, don't worry I'm about with it. the DJ. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's All right, go. let's go take it out.